Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, so I've just started the recording. Let's let's switch to the uh, focus cam. We'll be here, and I'll just uh, for the most part just hide my my video, and we'll mm -hmm. just kind of let you guys uh, go for it. Occasionally, you're gonna see my mouse, and I apologize. It's just things are gonna things are just gonna float around from time to time, <laughs> and that's, that's just how it how it's gonna be. Um, but yeah, so deep dive, I guess, uh, with the, with the roles involved, let's, um, let's start introducing everyone and we'll end with, uh, Emmanuel. And, uh, and yeah, I can, I can actually introduce everybody, uh, Jeremy and everybody can talk a little bit about themselves if you don't mind. Yeah, we'll go for it. So, right. Um, hi everyone. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, privilege to be here with us, uh, to be here with y'all. Uh, my name is Costa. My nickname is uh, KC, and my surname is completely unpronounceable by mere mortals. So I go with that. Um, I was, uh, I'm one of the eight people that actually uh, worked on this group project that was given to us by our tutors in the Escape Studio on our master's course on uh, Game Art for 2021. Um, we are a team of eight, and Manuel is our studio assistant, so he's representing uh, the school. Um, first and foremost, uh, so uh, we have uh, Matthew uh, or Matt. Uh, we have Tristan. Hello. Hey. And uh, the rest of the class, uh, we had uh, Joseph McGrath, uh, Joshua LeBrun. We had Ferina Farah Diba. Um, we had uh, Khan Yasha, and uh, we had Emily Dervey as well. Did I forget anyone? I don't think so. No, that's everyone. Yes. Uh, so this was our class of uh, eight for this. Um, we, once we start the deep dive, we will go into individual roles and how we did things. But uh, first and foremost, I'll let Lely talk a little bit about himself and the studio. Lely, that's you, man. Hi, guy. Uh, yes, uh, I'm an extra assistant uh, at Escape Studio, and uh, I follow the guys from Masters in Game Art. Uh, they start, uh, they basically as a one-year master, and uh, they start from zero scratch sometimes. Uh, nothing, basically, this is their group project, and... I've been the, we've been, because there are also the tutor. We've been their guide, I would say. Uh, they had uh, feedback from uh, from the industry too, from Rockstar. Uh, nothing. I told them everything that I knew. I'm happy that uh, uh, to see the results. And uh, what's with Gris, uh, this is a great, I mean, a great group project, probably one of the best so far that we had uh, as a, Game art in, in my uh, basically as a yeah master in game art. Oh, uh, Matt, uh, sorry, Larry. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Matt, on you. Um, you want to talk about roles now? No, no, no. Just uh, you know yourself, where you come from, you know what. Uh, okay, sure, just a yeah. little bit. Of that. Um, yeah, well, I mean, um, I suppose I suppose uh, my my background is. Uh, originally in in film, uh, sort of what I started off doing, uh, filmmaking, editing, that kind of stuff. Um, it was only really during the pandemic when all of the that sort of stuff shut down. I wasn't able to really work anymore. I sort of discovered Unreal, started making stuff, and I really liked it uh, more than I liked doing film. So I, you know, I ended up switching over doing this masters. It's been really fun so far. I've learned uh, a lot of stuff, and uh, yeah, proud of the work that we've that we've done. Cool. And Chris? Yeah. So I started from uh, an illustration background and uh, from there I've been like doing like uh, concept design and stuff like that. And uh, that's, you know, the uh, the 2D concept side of things have just moved into 3D. And from there I was um, starting to produce more 3D stuff rather than illustrations. Um, I've have several years working for a architect company doing um, uh, pre-visualizations of architecture for exteriors and interiors and then uh, I've just 
push forwards into wanting to to do more game side of things and and so that's why i started doing the master's degree and that's where we're up to now cool uh that's for me i i am a bit more curious uh situation really i had no artistic background at all before the masters i started learning after the pandemic after i was laid off uh, from my work i started learning unreal engine through the academy from epic through the free academy online and i uh i fell in love with it i fell in love with uh starting working with pretty much 3d i didn't do any sort of 3d though like creation before the master's degree so i knew literally nothing uh about uh, how to create a model or anything like that other than maybe a couple of uh, you know tutorials in blender um i am the elder statesman of the team i'm uh, very close to my 38 year and i was 16 years uh, in hospitality and uh, michelin stars as a manager and i just love games and i really wanted to you know switch my career uh, after the pandemic so obviously um there is a lot of stories for the rest of the guys we had some amazing talent uh i would say that uh, this this uh, this is a this was an amazing group with a lot of uh, you know great talent in terms of seeing the, seeing and working with and doing different things but uh, jeremy you can show the video if you want and uh, we can show a little bit live and then we can go through the deep dive there is music but it's not necessary if you cannot sound if you cannot have sound that's fine with us uh, if you can have sound it's a nice uh, addition there's like a little piano track yeah it's, Wonder, a uh, it's a waltz it's a waltz yeah i'm like thinking about the the legal it's off of youtube um you know the yeah. the youtube uh the studio like they have all the music on there that you can download oh, yeah. i assume it's all royalty free or that's where i got yeah, it from so. yeah it is it is cool okay i will i will drag it into uh into frame here awesome you guys will I, still I, have I, your yeah. mics hot by the way mm -hmm. I, I wanted to put slayer but they wouldn't let me <laughs> no <laughs> didn't quite fit the vibe Let's see oh here. come on now So let me just say that what uh, everything you see is actually live and playable in engine and the video was uh, done by Matthew you know obviously if you have somebody in cinema in cinema and movies you take advantage of them right yeah, you can see the framing for sure um well the video is playing because uh, I saw yesterday the stream as well this was a 12 week project with two weeks of pre production. So, this was production wise, uh, total, total duration about 10 weeks of actual constructing after the block out phase and everything. And I would say a few days for polishing. as well just in case someone's stream is being rough yeah absolutely uh, moshi moshi is uh, we were eight people oh yeah feel free to interact with chat if you guys see it uh so um I'm just uh, getting ready to post also everybody's uh, profiles on the chat for the team. Nice. It's only fair that everybody gets their credit. And you can show also, Jeremy, the R station posts with uh, everyone's credit as well in the meantime, if you want. Cool. This will do. Nice. Oh yes, names. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, I'll just make sure we got everything. We in hope here. you enjoyed, huh? Dude, it's uh, yeah, yeah it's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so uh, we kind of 
so we walk, we went through the video. You guys kind of <clears throat> talked about where you'd come from. Uh, feel free to ask questions in chat. And um, this is more of a conversation and not so much a um, formatted process. So we're just, it's, it's a discussion, right? Uh, a chat. Uh, so how many weeks did you say? So it was eight people. How many weeks was it? Uh, eight people. The project was 12 weeks, uh, two weeks of uh, pre-production, 10 weeks of production. Was that, uh, wait, so the, it like your voice blurred all together with the weeks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> uh, the project is 12 weeks, 12. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we had two weeks of pre-production, which we're going to go through and we have we had 10 weeks of actual production. That's a, that's a very short amount of time um, <laughs> to actually produce the content. Cause I do remember when you were, when you were sending me updates, I was looking at it and I was like, okay, this is, this is moving very fast. Um, ben it, it ben did, and chat. Did, yeah, go sorry. ahead. No, no, I was just saying it did really come together. Like in, in the second half of production, like, uh, I, I think, you know, Casey, I think, uh, posted, um, like some screenshots for you to look at on your stream whenever it was maybe midway yeah, through. When, yeah. Six, about seven weeks ago when you were doing the community yeah. feedback <clears throat> session. And, you know, like I've looked back at some of those screenshots now and, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's mad. <laughs> it's yeah. It was so underdeveloped. Like I, I think I, I imagine that if anyone would have looked at it, you'd never think that we'd, we'd be able to finish it in the time, but managed to yeah second half was we really, really um ready. yeah jeremy actually yes. if you have uh, my art station post on the bottom you can actually see the video you can show the video of the um, timeline of the progress right so yeah, we, i was just and, about to ask you guys like sorry i'm just scrolling through this all uh i was just about to ask you guys if you had any screenshots of the of the blockouts so oh I yeah listen, this yeah, first this first image here, i'll just full screen this as well yeah, uh, and I'll just keep pausing the pausing the video when I need to. Uh, j just to make sure, I posted on the chat every member's art station. Please feel free to click around and see their work because there are some amazing people that work into this. Yeah, and we can we can so, link that as yeah. well in the video description uh, later. Fantastic. That way, that way, it's all all these links are kind of together. Cool. So, uh, so yeah, yeah so here we're looking here, at yeah. pretty much week one. This is week one. This is week one. If you play, I would say by the fifth or sixth second, I mean, you, you need to play the video. Yeah. Okay, here, this is halfway. No, if, Matthew, is it? Isn't that like five seconds? I just freeze it. Yeah, here. like, yeah, I would say that this is, this is halfway. So... Yeah. So how how did you guys divide up this map? Maybe I should uh, minimize this for a minute, and we'll go back to the to the stream. Um, uh, Matthew, but... you can take that. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, yeah, the original level that we had was a lot bigger than this, which is, um, I, I suppose, yeah, uh, we we were definitely way over ambitious. Uh, with with our original plan like we we had uh to start with um we'd planned to do a whole street behind sorry too fast a whole street behind with like a whole alleyway situation which leads through and comes around and comes up and then leads into this sort of bigger market area which uh you know due to time constraints most of that stuff had to get cut but um for the actual main area um i could just do a top down i suppose it's a little yeah, if you want to go f11 so we can have the full screen yeah. as well mm -hmm. uh just to, just to um clarify the theme was given to us by our tutor so it was bioshock infinite in london how would us the city of london or a place mm -hmm. in london would look in the bioshock infinite universe and space yeah so i mean really when we were tackling this um i think we decided pretty early on to focus on this main area and then get to any sort of other parts uh, if we had time and i think we found that probably the most important 
pieces were going to be this kind of like shops area because this has a lot of opportunity to put props and set dressing and other stuff like that uh, as well as you know sort of the centerpiece area because this is one of the main focuses when you're when you're looking from underneath the arch yeah um, the, the brief sorry matthew the brief yeah. is that the 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 project needs to be playable it needs to run efficiently and it needs to have it needs to have a centerpiece that would be the main focus of the level yeah that makes right. that makes sense um everything is is it's always kind of driven around focus like a, a main focus point um mm -hmm. so okay so if the, there was eight of you um how i guess how was it divided up was like some people looking at buildings or like did someone oh, look at the right, block sure, out first yeah. So yeah. in the in the pre-production phase, we kind of had a discussion within the team to identify our strengths and weaknesses. And we agreed that we would, for this group project, we would focus on creating stuff depending on our strengths. So, for example, Emily, Emily Derby is an amazing sculpt, right? I don't know anything about zebras. It would be mad for me to kind of go ahead and say, okay, I want a sculpt where we do have somebody that sculpts, you know, properly. Uh, Tristan, with his archivist background, it would be mad if we didn't play him to his strengths and, okay, focus on the buildings and the architecture so we have the best possible uh, thing. Uh, Joe McGrath uh, is a great technical artist, a lot of knowledge. He did a lot of work for us in terms of um, blueprints and in terms of like, shaders and in terms of uh, the clouds uh, that we have. Um, we had... Fran, who is a great prop artist, she's uh, she was responsible for uh, the for one of the main uh, stores. She did an amazing job as well with a few more props. Uh, I'm I'm better at texturing, but I did know a few blueprints as well. So I constructed in the very beginning the um, the rail system, the air rails and the wagon system uh, through blueprints, and it was working from the get go. Uh, Khan, Khan Yasha, uh, the guy is amazing at VFX. He constructed uh, a lot of the sparks that you see, like the VFX, the tear system, the tear shader, uh, for, uh, you know, some of the props that we have, giving a little bit of, um, you know, as a nod, paying tribute to the original game as well, if anybody knows, played Bioshock Infinite. Uh, the engine, uh, like the steam, the engine fire, that was all can. We did have also a Niagara system that uh, had um, leaves and we did have some uh, trees, but especially after your feedback, when we had that session and you told us that from every angle, the trees are kind of hiding the centerpiece, we took them away and we settled for uh, bushes and flowers. Oh, and I, that I proved... forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we almost forgot about that. We actually had trees, you know. And uh, that was also uh, great. Uh, Joshua, again, a great prop artist. He did a lot of the props for us. Um, everybody contributed to their strengths. And uh, we, we achieved this result. Uh, I think uh, Khan did also the, uh, the flags. He worked uh, very hard in, uh, in Maya. And uh, Emily also did the animations for her uh, automatons that we can go closer and see at some point. So we kind of divided the team like that. We played to our strengths. And we, from the beginning, we had, like, I was responsible for setting up the pipeline. So I did all the project and uh, set the name conventions and uh, the file system. We used Perforce uh, because this is the only class in Escape Studios that was 100% from beginning to end online. We never met each other. Like, guys met each other in London, and they took, uh, uh, you know, some reference photos and everything, but I haven't seen them, you know? That's, uh, yeah, there was, there's a few questions in chat already about, like, how, yeah, how do you maintain yeah. that? Uh, like, how are you gathering the references, and how do you maintain <laughs> the that feeling of Bioshock while also making your own? I mean, you have to identify what Bioshock Infinite is. Obviously, it was a lot of Americana. Uh, Emily Dervy uh, has a degree in history and she did a fantastic job in actually doing a research for us, the team, and do a whole presentation of how Victoria and era London looked like, felt like, and kind of what was the vibe. 
And we decided very early to go with an environment that is not squeaky clean, but it wasn't also, uh, you know, all this like dirt. If you see like uh, in Peaky Blinders uh, in Birmingham, you know, Victoria, UK after War II, uh, very like dirty, very sort of like degenerate. Um, we wanted to differentiate the, uh, the feeling to be like upper class, but also very Londonish. So we knew that we had to do a lot of architecture uh, research and Tristan did a lot of that as well. And we knew that we had to base our uh, designs on that era and that era only in Great Britain. We were looking a lot at the original game, but there was there's a trap in there that you can actually copy too much of the original game. Mm-hmm. And then it's just not London. Uh, it's a lot of Americana there. So we did that. And uh, I think that proved to be of benefit because all the feedback we got was like, yeah, this is like UK, this is London, this is British style. But then the aerials, the clouds, the island bases, the tears, the automatons, that screams by Yeah. Yeah, you, you immediately start to see certain it's details that detail just there. make it that, right? Um, is there, uh, it's, do you have any pre-production materials, like different ways in chat was asking if like, do you guys have any pure refs that, uh, you guys were sharing around? It's quite interesting uh, talking about that presentation. We used middle, yeah, we used middle board and I can, or Matthew can show you the middle board that we have mm-hmm. actually. Yeah, yeah Matthew. Yeah. It'd be, what else did you use Miro, uh, for? So we it? used middle, so we used middle board for, uh, our, for our art Bible and our references, we used Trello for, uh, I used Trello for uh, pretty much uh, organization. Uh, we used Perforce to work, uh, you know, to or together online. And we used Google Drive to share uh, all our presentations and files uh, between us. Right. We, we also had folders in Pinterest, which we um, oh, yes. uh, dabbled in as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Pinterest. Uh, is Khan, Khan, so Khan did, a, did an amazing job um, for uh, setting up our Pinterest uh, as well. So is this? Uh, I guess I don't know, Matthew. Do you want to walk us through kind of how? Is there a certain yeah. organization to this, or like, how um, is this laid out? I think I think it, the, the the yeah, there's there's some, definitely some organization to it. I think it got a little bit messy uh, <laughs> as the as more images kept getting added, but. Um, yeah, like uh, I think as you mentioned earlier, like a, a few of the guys met up in London and they were sort of going around and taking, you know, loads of like primary reference images of all these different places. So like, I mean, for example, like the, we have a bunch of images here of the Burlington Arcade, which which ended up sort of being like one of the primary references for um, a model in 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 the uh, in the level. Um, and then yeah, it's just a bunch of like just trying to capture, I guess, like a lot of uh, like those sort of like quintessentially London details, I suppose, and uh, carrying them across into our level, because we 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 were like the the concept itself was a little bit tough, and the fact that like Bioshock Infinite is very American, and trying to situate it in London whilst keeping the original theme, uh, I think we we found quite difficult at, uh, at the beginning, and so we knew that it was gonna, we're gonna have to sort of like really get some of those things that really signify London. Um, to you know, so that people people know like where this is is situated. Um, but yeah, I mean, like this this board is it's it's basically there's just a load of images of architecture and and you know sort of like fences and all the and all this kind of stuff that um that that uh, the the guys thought would be would be useful for for putting together uh, for making it feel more Londony. And we did have. There was a bunch of like other game references and stuff, but I, I don't I don't quite know where they've gone because we also were looking at um, like other video games how they did London. Like uh, we had Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate for one of the games, and I uh, the... if you zoom right out, it's on the left. Oh, it is. Yeah, I think it's far left. Yeah, if you zoom out. Oh, it's with the yeah, oh, there it is. It's oh, over there. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, I see. Oh, right. Yeah, the Infinity they, Board. Yeah. So we had, yeah, we had like some stuff from The Order, Assassin's Creed, Thief, that vampire game. And then, yeah, a lot of breaking stuff down from Infinite as well. Like, yeah, this this is significantly better organized than, <laughs> than the other <laughs> side. But, but yeah, yeah, you know, breaking it down into all of the sort of like the key elements that we found 
um, in Infinite and uh, yeah, using this to try and carry across into our level. That, that's interesting I mean, with the VFX it has its own category and like yeah, yeah 100% because a part of uh, the course is actually VFX and uh, sorry, let me just give credit what credit is due. We had some amazing tutors. It's actually Chris Avini and Tom Harl. They are pretty much, they took us, you know, under their wings, slapped us a little bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, they taught us pretty much. They tried to teach us uh, all this stuff, especially from a personal point of view. I didn't know anything before. And now, you know, uh, being able to contribute to such a so such a project feels like surreal to me but it's all up to them and tom harrell was our vfx uh, tutor we did uh, uh, six weeks of uh, vfx on our third module and we learned a lot about niagara we learned a lot about uh, advanced shaders unreal engine you know uh, in maya some uh, stuff as well and we wanted to make sure that we could take advantage of that uh, as i said khan did some amazing work in vfx and uh, we can show it uh, live in a moment. Uh, but we we did need to have VFX. Like I, I, we were, I'm un, I'm unhappy that we don't have the portals from <laughs> from the original game. But it was a step too far. It's it, yeah, it. it's crazy. Yeah, portals are. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine trying to deal with uh, with that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, listen. On my previous project like for the vfx project i had some sort of a portal when you remember the video right for the halo mm -hmm. and i wanted so bad to actually have something like that but there just wasn't enough time like we have to accept that some things are gonna be left on the side i mean for what you guys what what your uh your team of eight pulled off is is pretty crazy um i should actually double check discord just to make sure we're not getting a huge flood of uh questions that <laughs> uh yeah if you um matthew if you'd like to do a walk around on the level just to cover a little bit of uh, space and you know the video is nice but uh we can start touching a little bit like place by place yeah yeah you can tell me where you want me to go i can i can walk around you can start with the gate because that's our starting point and go back and see the set dressing a little bit so we can talk about how we approach that. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little slow and give it a second. There we go. Yeah, it's no, it's no worries. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, RTX 3070 cannot cope with our project. <laughs> <laughs> we still, I mean, we still have an hour and 15 minutes technically. So. Yeah. So if you turn, if you turn around Matthew and uh, we can go, you know, mm -hmm. with our little design. You can see start. right. Yeah. So this is our starting. Uh, um, the level design was inspired a lot by uh, uh, by a specific place of the game at the beginning. For whoever, anybody that played the game is when uh, the hero actually arrives and it goes through that big fair and there is like an open space over there that has like this sort of gate with two policemen and uh, a few stairs uh, leading to our, to our water fountain. Uh, we felt that we can play it safe by, uh, in level designing to kind of copy a little bit of the game because we're not level designers. And as much as we would like to be, uh, I think imitation is the best form of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Lattery? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank, you. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I'm Greek. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so that led a lot of uh, our design for the level. Uh, with the opening gate, we also saw it as a, uh, with a closed gate, we saw it as a, as an opportunity to have like a closed to open area transition. So if you go closer, uh, the gate was made by, uh, Tristan, was that you? Yeah, so I, I um, modeled uh, the, the gate and then Emily did the, um, the uh, coat of arms. Yeah, this is an amazing piece, like I don't know how many it does that way. Uh, and then on the left, we have uh, our first glimpse of the automaton of little Timmy, the shoe shiner. That also was done by Emily and rigged by Emily. Um, and we set dressed uh, the level accordingly. And then on the other side, we have the, on the other wall, we have the letter boxes and a couple of uh, things if you want to go there, Matt. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the amount, the so amount this of is, detail is super nice. Yeah, so this is our starting point, like setting up, setting up pretty much the the tone of the level, and then we kind of go on the left. The police sign that uh, Fran did is also well, no, great. It's... I just noticed it's floating. What a disaster. <laughs> Let's just quickly move on from this wait, one. Wait until you ship <laughs> a game and you do that. Yeah. You're like, oh man, I built this and then it's floating, but it's live. <laughs> wait, which, which revision is this? I don't know. And then this is the newest one. We dickily just no one ever noticed. I've looked at it so many times. Didn't even hey, notice. listen, we're between friends here. Nobody's going to tell us anything. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so then we go into the main area. And we start moving towards, you know, the center of the, the center of, uh, we go there. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you go on the left, we have a small balcony that we have it, uh, just for, uh, uh okay. sorry, the stream, <laughs> Matthew, wait, mm. because I'm looking at the Twitch stream. I'm not oh yeah, yet. it's probably, de it's probably delayed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah but my, that's fine. Yeah. That, look that's at Discord, fine. otherwise, otherwise it's going to be like, you're going to be on a five second delay. Yeah, but, but, my laptop is, you know. Yeah. Um, where do you want me to go? Yeah. Okay, yeah, here we go. So, what are you here right now? This is like uh, the first uh, uh, upper balcony that we have our new stand with uh, little Timmy. And uh, then on the right hand side, if you go down, we have the dirty area, the more like industrial kind of dirty London area. We wanted to have uh, Joe did uh, an amazing blockout. If you. Uh, uh, that uh, was like a dirty alley with like a bit more like lower grade uh, citizens, but we it was too big. So instead of we did this area over here that we kind of populated, you know, with like a couple of pipes, uh, yeah. like dirt and like the more like, you know, um, disorganized kind of stuff. And it's obviously also, it's like a bit more dark, a bit more hidden. It's closer to the islands, to the bases, you know, so it's more dirty, more like uh, steam. And uh, that was our note to us, uh, from us to like lower poverty kind of working class London. Uh, then we can go to the main area of the centerpiece, which yeah. we can explain. Uh, Tristan will explain a bit more because he was responsible for creating the centerpiece, but a major, a major uh, hurdle that we had very early and until the mid to later stages of the project was the centerpiece. We originally had the idea because Matthew had the idea of constructing the layout of the of the level in mirroring the Piccadilly Circus area, which is you know famous and it has the Piccadilly um, uh, statue and water fountain. Emily did a fantastic job in sculpting the thing. Uh, we because we said that we would want a, fa a mechanical fountain, kind of sort of like a steampunky hybrid, and we kind of assigned three people. We had Khan for the engine, and he also did a lot of the concept art, which I forgot to say. Sorry, Tristan and Khan did a lot of work on the concept art that we created, and uh, they did an amazing job for that. But um, uh, it was Tristan, Emily, and uh, Khan that had the opportunity to work on the centerpiece. In theory, that's great. In practice, uh, that did not work out well because we were looking at something that is not coherent. You know, it's not one piece. And uh, we took a very hard decision that one person needs to do the centerpiece on their own. And that was Tristan. And uh, Tristan, you can take it from here. Man. Yep. So, um, yeah, so the, the the water fountain in Piccadilly, we wanted that really as the base of it to ha kind of have uh, a water fountain with a clock tower kind of like sitting on the top. Um, because from previous projects where they the, the majority of people were doing the centerpieces as a statue, so we wanted to break away from this by uh, uh, doing something a bit more Victorian and industrial, and we just thought... Uh, a mechanical clock tower would look really good. Um, and again, where we could, we wanted to pay tribute to it, it being London. So the clock face is actually designed by the clock face of Big Ben. However, the top area is done by the clock tower in up in Edinburgh in Scotland. 
Um, so it was like playing on lots of areas to, to kind of create something unique but recognizable for people. Um, and also so that we could, you know, bring in that steampunk theme wherever we could. You know, a great way to do this is with moving mechanical parts. And so the idea of creating these kind of like windows within the clock tower so that you could actually see through to all of these mechanics, um, I think um, helped to tie it all together to give that, that steampunk theme. Um, and then it was just a con contribution of, of trying to get as much you know, metal work as well as that London brick stone in there as much as possible as well. Um, but uh, but yeah, but it, it it was a shame that we couldn't get the uh, the base of the Piccadilly um, fountain in there. But um, we decided that you know we were just trying to like piece it into something that just wasn't looking right. So we had to make the unfortunate decision to take it away and actually create a, a new design for the clock tower. Yeah. And then, uh, so uh, just, yeah, I was just gonna say I'm looking at you're just sitting in this shot and I'm noticing like we always talk about layers and composition and you can see yeah. the layers literally moving independently of each other. <laughs> yeah, we, can, we, will, yeah <laughs> we will We will. talk about that as well because Joe did a fantastic job with that blueprint. But uh, Matthew, if you'd like to go like on the top view a little bit and show the centerpiece from the top as well, because it has some amazing work from Tristan, like uh, some details. Tristan, I think you modeled the clock after uh, Big Ben, right? Yeah, the actual yeah. face is... Um is very similar well basically identical to to, to big ben yeah. like i said the actual top part is from uh the uh clock tower in um in in edinburgh so that's also a hybrid paying a little bit of tribute there and uh can did the rigging well and the centerpiece uh the machine on the inside uh, i did a little bit of uh, work on that in terms of there is like a flashing a couple of flashing red lights indicating fire burning underneath the machine. Obviously, we didn't have any fire. We didn't have. We didn't need a fire per se to burn there. But it's just you know as another like layer, as you say, Jeremy, of interaction over there and uh, interest. Uh, Matthew, if you can go now, start going on the right hand side. Ah, sorry. Also, uh, for the Victoria sign. Victoria. We named our uh, city Victoria kind of Queen Victoria, paying tribute to that era. Uh, you know, the backstory was that Queen Victoria had enough of uh, London being such a dirty, you know, ugly city and wanted to take like a big part of it and put it in the sky. Uh, yeah. If anybody's interested in the uh, backstory and all you know. <laughs> that's <laughs> also uh, that's the, awesome, yeah. Also yeah. That, uh, that Victoria arch is, um, uh, is a, using a close reference to the arches in the original game, the Memorial Gardens. So a like a light for light for that to just bring a bit of um, that tribute back to the original game. Yeah, it draws Absolutely. a connection for sure. Um, so this was one of the main, uh, uh, this was our secondary like um, main uh, camera, like main pick that you were looking at the project. Uh, Jeremy, you saw that as well and you did say that uh, you like the, the camera, how it's pointing, but it was the trees and the stuff that was in front that was kind of taken away from it. Yeah. Uh, so we used a lot of that feedback to kind of set up our cameras as well. So over here, we go now to this uh, corridor. You can see a lot of the stuff. And uh, you can see dirt. You can see the water puddles that uh, Emily did. And they look amazing along with the manhole she did as well. And uh, over here now, we have our uh, main, like, um, uh, market uh, point so we have four individual shops on the left hand side we have like a grocery shop with general goods then we go to a bookshop on the right uh, yeah we go to a bookshop on the right then mm -hmm. we go to a sweet shop over here on the right and uh, finishing off we have like our flower shop oh, like the, the birds right <laughs> Yeah, yeah the bird Emily. was done by really the cool. bird was done by Emily, and it's such a nice piece to have because it's you can use it everywhere. You can put it like on the top yeah. over there and make it big or small, and it just works. Because we we thought like such an iconic thing within London, besides the like the underground, is the pigeons. 
that are everywhere. Great. So yeah, and then if you turn on the right, that's the alley. Uh, the alley finishes on a dirtier level as well. Like a little bit of storytelling. We try to do you know little places of storytelling with our set dressing as well, without signifying anything spectacular. Uh, like okay, there's the water pump that people take water from, and then there's like the kegs, you know, and the leaves that have fallen. Uh, there's water puddles. There is dirt over here. That's because you know all these flowers are around, you know, or like stuff falling from uh, the top of the buildings. So, and if you go now, Matthew, on the on the right hand side and look at the landscape, the background that we have, like the buildings. Mm -hmm. So starting from the right over here. Yeah, you can you can go up. What do you As mean? Well, oh, the oh, camera. Okay. Ah, is it is it oh. the playable, is it the playable yeah, mannequin? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so another another yeah. big point of Bioshock Infinite is the flank buildings. I mean, you cannot have the game without those, right? And we realized really early that that we had to take a modular approach for our buildings in order for us to actually be able to populate the space around the level because it's the sky. Um, if we had, let's say, I don't know, a Batman project, or if we had like, a, I don't know, a Last of Us project, we could create walls and foliage and all that stuff and cover it, and that should be fine. The sky is difficult. It has clouds, it has like, uh, you know, indication of air, it needs to have movement, it needs to have all this stuff. And we designed the, uh, the island, I was personally responsible for designing the island bases, and uh, Matthew and Tristan did the architecture as well. So we designed all that in order to be able to actually cling together modularly and for us to be able to actually populate the space around it. So you can even go closer, Matthew, and you can simulate so we can actually see the movement. So on the bigger buildings, what we did, uh, Joe did a very nice blue that actually takes everything, combines it in a single mesh and uh, creates a subtle movement. Um, so the bigger one on the left, you can see it going up and down slowly. We, obviously, we couldn't have like fast transition because if people live there, they're going to be sick all the time, like I am now. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, it's just the subtlety that needed to be there. So it's also layers of movement. The, the wagons are the fastest thing that moves. The propellers move up and down and circularly as well. The islands are bigger meshes, are big, bigger, bigger points of interest. So they need to be inhabitable and make sense from a gameplay perspective and from an environment perspective. Uh, same thing happened with all the buildings that we created and uh, there's movement everywhere. Everywhere on the background, everything is uh, moving. The engines, also underneath, I was responsible for creating those and Khan did this amazing uh, fire uh, uh, VFX uh, shader. Uh, Emily did the balloons and the ropes. Also, I believe it's just a stunning job. Um, we, I took personally the inspiration from the engines from the game itself and changing it a little bit, making it a bit more industrial because in the game, the Lutes couple has invented all this technology. And we had to pay tribute to that. We couldn't just pull something out of our behinds and call it, okay, now this is the engine. This is another way of uh, paying tribute to the game. The balloons, the same thing. The palette, the palette though, the color palette is different. So, uh, Matthew, you can take it now from here if you want, or Tristan, in terms of explaining the rest of uh, the movement and how we constructed the background. I, mean, I, I feel like you mostly covered it all. I mean, like, pretty <laughs> much. Like, I don't really have much more to add other than that. Like classic. Yeah, so just for the back, though, because I was not, I was not involved on the background over no. in the, uh, from the back. Yeah, so let's let's just go around how we constructed the modular pieces. Yeah, I yeah, mean, there's, it's... there's definitely a couple questions as well on like uh, texel density that you guys use and like how like did you use trim sheets? How like how how yeah. was, how did you construct things? Um. Yeah, I mean. Well, mo mo pretty much everything here, all of the buildings and stuff, I, I did 
all of these buildings here sorry that's probably a bit fast really smeary but um all of this 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 like modular kit that's pretty much every throughout the level tristan made this and made the ones for the background here um but yeah i mean like pretty much everything was modular i mean like when you look at some references of the game there is like a lot of these kind of floating islands all off in the place everywhere mm -hmm. i knew we need a lot of buildings to to fill this empty space because i mean we we did have trouble like trying to uh find a way to make this uh, like off in the sky look interesting um so so yeah so basically yeah everything is is modular like the walls i made um there's like three sets of walls there's like a four meter five meter and six meter wall some of them are um sort of solid like this just to fill uh spaces other ones have you know holes for windows there's like a few different window variations per wall um and then as long as well as that there's like a few of these different divided i, I was i was mainly just trying to based on the references that we got from london come up with a few different pieces that we could just sort of snap mm. uh differently together based on you know uh the 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 uh, the location to make it look sort of interesting and hopefully not too repetitive. Um, so so yeah. was it a lot of tileable materials? As well? Yeah, I think everything everything is yeah pretty much everything is. That's yeah. pretty much everything is. Pretty it's much like uh, yeah, and like vertex painted as well. Yeah, and vertex painted. So yeah, it's basically all tileables. It's it, it, there's nothing uh, like on these buildings. There's nothing that's unique. Um, it's all tileable bricks or this kind of tile level white stone uh this these windows are mapped to a uh trim sheet which is uh, yeah i'd love to just kind of get into these uh yeah this is just mapped to a trim sheet yeah. here which is like really jeremy, simple yeah jeremy just please or anyone don't ask about polygons okay just yeah. don't <laughs> all right well, it's let's like just it's like leave it to, to look at the polygons, yeah. No, no, you don't want to look at the polygons. Yeah, no, no, no. Let's yeah, just pretend, let's that. pretend that this is. Uh... It's it's a trillion. It's <laughs> it's a real engine six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this this trim sheet um is one that I made. I just kind of used it wherever. I mean, like this the scale of the project it, it got to the point where like uh, we we're sort of running out of time and a lot of stuff needed texturing and so just quickly slapping a few trim sheets together just to just to get stuff textured and in, in, in the level was sort of the mm -hmm. way to go. Um, yeah, I mean, this one, it just sort of had a stone, this brick and this this wood, which is mapped to pretty much all of the windows and like these pieces here and other stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like these roofs are just high level textures. Yeah, it's it's all it's all just made to be put together as quickly as possible, I guess. You still haven't changed the damn cube map in the glass. <laughs> no, that's that's one thing that is broken. Yeah, the uh, yeah, you can't. <laughs> You probably don't notice it. Yeah, yeah as long as something's map, moving, you're all right. Yeah, it is. It is just. I think it's the epic courtyard cube map. It which is, is the epic fine. courtyard. Yes, it's fine when you're not looking at it properly. But, but yeah, we're so, not above of uh, you know uh, putting our own mistakes and next to the line. You know, mm -hmm. one of but I mean, so funny. it it was a challenge. I mean, like Costa <laughs> said, we're working with a project that's up in the sky, so. Uh, you're not on the ground. You have all of these floating islands uh, like above you, and if you look over the the railing, you can see them below. So, it it we did a lot of playing around to to find, you know, a good balance between having floating islands to make it look like a city, but not too many that it's completely filling up the sky, so you don't have any breathing space to 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 kind of like relax your eyes from all this noise in your face. Um, and so we've had to do a lot of moving around and a lot of, uh, a lot of cutting in areas. Yeah, so I guess, so, uh, we've, we've kind of looked at most of the space. It, it mm -hmm. feels like we don't really go into the backdrop area too much, but, um, I wanted we go, to get we into go to the pub on the left. So like yeah. we haven't visited the pub on the left and the restaurant on the right. Let's, let's look at those two and then we'll get into the, uh, yeah. the, the parts that made you happy, the parts that made you sad. <laughs> sad. Yeah, go, yeah, we'll we'll get to it, but yeah, let's let's check these places out first. So yeah, that was uh, that was uh, mostly addressed by me, and then finished off by Joshua, who uh, that is he that was his also 
Rial's construction. Uh, very nice, uh, you know, chairs and tables and cutlery and glasses, uh, very nice glass shader. Uh, we wanted to have this sort of uh, space. Uh, the sides, the ornaments are from Tristan, which I we feel that they just complete the piece altogether. Uh, that was an area of interest as well in terms of, okay, this is a more like commercial uh, place, like, you know, it's what people go to enjoy a nice meal or a nice drink. They have the clock tower to look at, they have all these nice background that go up and down, you know. And then on the pub, the more like uh, dirty kind of uh, Englishman's uh, thing. Sorry, again. Uh, this is this was constructed by Matthew and uh, it's addressed by uh, me and Matthew. Uh, that was the area when you would walk from the bridge and you would go into the more like traditional English pub to enjoy like an ale or whatever pubs did those days. Um, again, a lot of foliage, a lot of vertex painting, a lot of detail uh, on the sides and kind of a bit more interesting uh, thing as well. And then uh, the background, we can go closer to the background, Matthew. Uh, we have just uh, made a few like uh, extra pieces, you know. I mean, uh, the the, the yeah, background yeah, yeah. is... The yeah. background is basically, yeah, I mean, there's just holes everywhere back here, but... But, but the, that's what the... it is, though. Like, uh, I think Jeremy said it once that <laughs> game development is a lie. We cheat a lot, right? So <laughs> from the player's perspective, there's something there that makes sense. For our perspective, we don't have to populate this because it's not a playable area. Yeah, you know, I mean, because this, this, this was, I mean, like, obviously, it was mostly a portfolio piece for us. So, um, like, in the time crunch, we did cut a lot of stuff. Uh, and just sort of throw things together as quickly as possible just to make it look good from a distance. I mean, like, when you get this close to all of this stuff, I mean, there's obviously holes everywhere. Like, the floor, like, it's not really set dressed or anything like that, but it doesn't really matter because, I mean, from back here, you can't see any of that. What you can see is just, like, yeah. the silhouette and the buildings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you have, you have to sell the you have to sell the experience, the illusion you're building. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, if you add all that detail, you're going to be, you're paying for it. The performance mm -hmm. will... Yeah. It's exactly mm -hmm. like Tobias says, and you know Tobias is one of my heroes as well. Um, if it makes sense when you're presenting it and it's believable, it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't make sense and it breaks the illusion, it needs fixing. Uh, a good example was the stairs. Um, Matthew, as mm -hmm. amazingly talented as he is, he did a set of stairs that were that felt more medieval. And after feedback session, after feedback session with our tutors, you know, they said, okay, this is great if it was in a castle. It's not great in a commercial area. And he had to redo the stairs. And that is perfectly fine. So we also kind of went through a lot of iterations for a lot of things. The bollards are, uh, that I made on the left, the single ones are a trim sheet. They don't have to go like crazily storytelling as long as they make sense where they are and how they're constructed and how they're textured. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very easy to uh, look at all of this and, oh man, the stream is getting super <laughs> crunched down. Yeah, um, sorry. Bad internet, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is all right. Sorry. <laughs> um, we'll make sure to link the videos and all that stuff as well yeah. in, the, in the post. But like what, what you guys are saying is like you have all of these assets that you need to build. And the reality is, is if you treat every asset as a hero asset, you're yeah. just never going to finish it. Um, yeah. You have to but, pick up uh, yeah. fights. You, you have to realize, okay, um, do I really need to spend like a day or two days texturing a piece that it's going to be like, I don't know, a second visible in the video and maybe it's going to be on the background? Or do I put more time in actually doing like this amazing sign, you know? Yeah. Oh man, we're getting some good questions. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start digging through these because they're. Uh, I have been looking at the chat. There's been yeah. so many that have gone past it. Yeah, I'm, I'm noting them all down just so that yeah. we don't lose, uh, we don't lose anything. But, uh, but uh, a lot of these are how, how did you guys face these, uh, the challenges? Like, what are the difficulties that you ran into? I, we can just go person to person and talk about like what was what did you really like what did you enjoy putting in that maybe no one ever sees and uh what is something that was very uh difficult for you or was a challenge for the for the team 
We'll probably start with Casey so he can take a okay. breather. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, personally, the challenge was because I was appointed producer. Um, the challenge was to try to keep everybody on the same page. And because we're not in a studio environment, you don't have that personal connection. So I would say, and I can ask you this, Jeremy, have you ever been in a team that everybody was hand holding Kumbaya, let's make it from beginning to end? In the beginning, yes. In the <laughs> beginning. In the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the end of the project, you understand who you're working with. So am I going to say that uh, we didn't have, you know, uh, difficulties interacting with each other? No. But we all realize that this is a project that will set us in our way. And mm. everybody did an amazing job. Okay. Uh, another personal difficulty for me was um, holding myself accountable in terms of, you know, if, if, if you have a, if you're responsible for something, it's easy to go like, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, it's very hard to actually be disciplined. And I was lucky enough that I learned that from my previous career that, and I'm sorry, I can go a little bit, but ish needs to be done, right? And it needs to be done in a timely manner, and it needs to be done at a, at a quality level that is acceptable for somebody to go through an interview and say, this is amazing how you did that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I personally try to strive to do. Like, I want to be... Because I was the person that was the least artistic from the whole team. No art background, no nothing. I had to work twice as hard to make sure that I'm on the same level. And that was the biggest challenge for me, personally. Uh, Project-wise, it was just long hours. Like, I cannot remember how many days we, stand, we stayed with Matthew at 3 o'clock in the morning, checking roughness values, checking you know, triangles, checking trocles, all this stuff. But then that was something that we chose to do. So, uh, you know, the project moves forward. And it was, a, it was my and our responsibility. That was the biggest thing for me. Well, you want to pass it to, to someone? Uh, I don't know, Matthew, let's go. Yeah, I mean, I, like I was mostly, <clears throat> for most of the project, I was pretty much focused on uh, like all the buildings and all this kind of stuff, uh, architecture. Um, so I suppose the biggest challenge for me was trying to find like an interesting layout, I suppose, for for the buildings and and in general. Like I spent uh, I spent a lot of time sort of you know moving certain things around. Like we had the core layout where we knew we wanted some of these buildings behind. Um, the centerpiece, uh, but like, like at one point we had sort of like a whole uh, coming from the end of this building it was like curving round. Like round here, we had sort of like a big uh, set of buildings that were directly in front, and and it was trying to get that balance between uh, having enough like architecture around to where it feels like a real space and that people actually live here, and not blocking off too much. Um, to where you couldn't really see the sky and you couldn't really tell that it was Bioshock Infinite anymore. Like trying to find that balance I found was was um, quite tough. Uh, yeah, I think that was probably the biggest uh, challenge for me. Anyway. Do you have something that you're super proud of that uh, I, one of the questions was like, is there something super proud of that no one sees, but you're like, yeah, it's in there. Uh, the hatch on the pub. It's <laughs> Where? Oh no, this thing is bad. <laughs> no, 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 this thing is not good. It, the hatch <laughs> on the pub is bad. This is we don't look at that. Um, super proud. Of, well, it's it's kind of, it's a little bit tough, I guess, that question because the buildings are quite prevalent, and so you'd think that everyone would kind of see them like all the time. Um, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, it's like a little bit of a a, a, a hard one. But um, do you know how many pieces they are? The, like what do you mean by people? What do you mean? Like the this this modular set that you've constructed oh, uh, at such a level. Actually, I don't I don't know actually. Um, yeah, I mean, there's I have awnings. There's like three different ones. 
a bunch of different of these these billboard things because i also did all of these um these signs to like looking a lot of the the reference from um old london especially like the piccadilly area like they have they had all of these sort of really cool um text signs and stuff like that mm. uh so i made all of those with the the yeah and then like I don't actually know how many pieces it is in total, but like I made all of these like different signs and the, the, I can the, say something that you need to be really proud of. Uh, go on. Well, I've seen it so many times. It's actually it's it's tough for me yeah. to kind of I, right now. I've yeah, I've just like seen it so many times that I don't really know um like what what it is that I'm like proud of. I'm sort of like a bit sick of seeing it so <laughs> I don't know if I'm, <laughs> yeah, okay, know if I'm okay. proud of any oh, of it. <laughs> to be oh, honest oh, with okay. you. Go to that baby. Go to the oh. damn baby. Go oh, to the listen. baby. Yeah. Open up the shader. The shader because the moment I saw it, I lost it. Jeremy, this is golden. Um, I don't know which one it is. Anyone? It's the same shader. Look, it's really simple. It's uh, yeah. exactly. Wait, is this exactly. the one? No, we can't. We can't see it with the way you're sharing. I think oh, right now. Okay, okay. hang on, hang on. Uh, if you if you uh, put the I'll tab to, to the Unreal, the it'll work. There we go. Like that. So is this is just a funny texture that actually goes on and off for the emissive? Yeah, I just put um, I just put like t uh, twice as many like you can see it here. I just put the bulbs for you know these in different places, and then yeah. like the these like this one set of bulbs in the UV space is at like the very left, and the other set is basically just off the point five, and then it's oh, just panning a. <laughs> And then it's, it's just we, panning. Yeah, it's right. just panning this half and half mask over, over it, so that like yeah, this this mask here. But it, it's something so simple. But once you put that in yeah. the level, and I opened up the level for the first time, yeah. see, it was a bit like whoa, those are, those that are amazing. Something. Yeah, that, that's, that's just yeah. That I mean, awesome. the, yeah, that guy is like he's a crazy genius. Like, <laughs> who the hell yeah, thinks like, about this stuff? You literally treated those light bulbs and the emissives kind of like how e ink works yeah i was i was like the way that i was like thinking of it like when you see these actual like ne like either neon signs these big bulb signs like when you have the animated ones they do work like that where there's if it's like a few frames they have like you know this there's the neon and, they, and then certain ones turn off and, and turn on at different times so i just yeah did it like the exact same way as that that's awesome look at these yeah i mean it looks like... it looks really wonky when you when you get up close but from <laughs> from far away it's fine that's so good but it's just so retro that's that's the amazing thing it just screams like retro victorian london right yeah uh how, tris how about, i guess uh, that's yeah you know. tristan how you doing yeah well i you know i was also a part of the uh, the architecture but um really the majority of the architecture i i did were more the uh like unique pieces so the things like the the bridge uh, the arcade building at the starting point, uh, the centerpiece. Um, we also created the triangular building, which is the pavilion, um, which we've, we've moved around to the back um, of the level due to um, uh, compositional reasons. Um, so I think that was like the biggest challenge because it was doing these like unique buildings. Like I, I was given the privilege of doing the centerpiece um, However, when it was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to do this. But at the same time, it's like, oh, my God, this is the centerpiece to this level. It needs to look good. I need to make sure that, like, everyone's happy with it. And it's something that, you know, is deemed centerpiece worthy. So that was all, always a little bit of a, uh, um, like, a, an alarm bell in the back of the head, thinking I need to make sure that I do this right and that everyone is happy with it. Um, I also did a lot of the like the the, the center area, like the um the, the pillars and the uh, and the flower beds. Mm -hmm. So, really taking on the majority of this area. Um, Khan did an amazing um, uh, all, all, all the foliage that we placed into it to really bring it life. But the actual like architecture for it around it um, was by myself, and so it was just like it 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 was quite a challenge to make sure that I I did this justice and and made it look. Like I say, a, a centerpiece worthiness. Um, so I think that was more of a, a challenge for me. I mean, it also was the overwhelming size of it, and you're thinking, "Oh my god, like where do you begin?" There's like so much to do, and it's trying to like break that down in your head to more uh, 
bite-sized chunks and just you know addressing one section at a time mm-hmm. and really condensing it down so it's not as overwhelming for you because when you go into a project like this of such scale and you're just there like instantly panicking thinking this is like too big we're like like where do we even begin this is you know we're not going to get it done in time but it's just you know stepping back calming down and just focusing on areas at a time and then eventually you'll just you know go through the 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 tick list and just get those areas done and before you know it you've got this completed level that you didn't think you would be able to achieve yeah it's i i mean the the size of this scene is so crazy right it's like it's a it's a scene it's a full-on scene and uh a lot of people put themselves in this expectation bucket of like this is what i need to put in my portfolio and and they're thinking and just by themselves it's just that's not that's not really achievable uh, without putting insane amounts of time in uh, or finding. And knowing uh, your tool set as well, like knowing very yeah. well what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. You know? was, it, was there was there creative directors for you guys? Like- uh, no, we didn't. We made decisions uh, or we tried to make decisions pretty much as a team. Um, we felt that there was a discussion at the beginning. Uh, because uh, the roles were a bit, uh, you know, at the beginning we had specific roles, but then obviously we changed. Uh, as you know, we would always do within a team. Uh, we didn't have, you know, uh, a person that would dictate the rest, or like a creative director, because I, because we were pretty much everybody at the same level. Um, that was a gift and a curse, I would say. Uh, the gift is the fact that, you know, everybody can say. Uh, anything they think and you know it's a discussion the curse is that us in the industry are always going to work probably under some art director you know and somebody will dictate and will will judge you and your work and we didn't have this person and for the tutors as much as you know they can help us and Lely and Christian and Tom they are not the art directors. We are in we are in charge of our own project. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the biggest challenges on the team was that uh, then we had people that felt like they needed to be told what to do, and we needed we had people that they didn't want to be told what to do, right? And that's perfectly acceptable on both sides. Yeah, that's just that's just a profile. That's the type of person, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, hundred yeah. uh, percent. At the end of the day, we reached a result that we can be really proud. And I think, you know, it goes well and as well. Uh, so when you guys are discussing, like, since there was a creative, there wasn't a creative director, and everyone had to, uh, uh, everyone was kind of jumping in with ideas. I assume that's where disagreements w- would pop up, or like uh, we should yeah. go this way, and we should go this way. Yeah. How do you, I how mean, do you address those? Hardly. Like it yeah. was hard because we were not. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, we were not face to face online and that's why i said the biggest challenge for me was not being in a studio because you know you can go grab a coffee and you can have a chat face to face it's very right? different yeah exactly and people are introverts and people like are extroverts and i'm obviously uh, as you see a massive extrovert and i can talk to anyone but not everybody's like me so there were different approaches for different situations and there were different engagements for different people. That was the hardest part. Mm. Okay. Um, however, you know, there is always something, something positive coming out of it. So we know now how teams work and how you would approach different things, or at least we have an idea on this sort of like workspace. How would you approach different characters and different things and different uh you know ideas and okay i I might change something at three o'clock in the morning and uh because nobody's online i'm waiting for tomorrow's meeting that we had every day at 10 o'clock um i'm waiting for tomorrow's meeting to say something and then next thing i know probably eight o'clock in the morning before the meeting somebody goes and says why was that move so this is the thing this is the challenge that man those are conversations that happen in the industry every single day every (laughs) single day and they're, yeah. you know, cross uh, department, like, hey, I, a level designer, I, I built this area out. Where did, like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, just to answer that, Eric, uh, just, uh, he just posted that any advice on the approach you took to that, would you have approached it differently? If, like, you never know how commitment and work ethic goes for everyone. Uh, somebody can work five hours and produce amazing stuff, and somebody can work 12 hours and think that it's so far. You know, I'm not the one to judge it, but I can tell you right now that at some point it's, there's a clear distinction between, you know, producing results and those results to be uh, able to be put in the level. I can tell you that I had stuff taken away from the level. Matthew did, Tristan did, uh, Emily did, Joe did, everyone did. And I did say that in the beginning that probably like 20 or 30 percent of the assets that we're going to do probably are not going to make it in the level. So we have to be you know, clear on that. And I feel the worst, especially me, I feel the worst for uh, our colleague Emily because she did such a fantastic job with that scout for the centerpiece. And we just couldn't have it. But she still has a piece for her portfolio, you know. That's what our tutor said. Um, so, you know, you can do a lot of hard work. And it might not show in the final project. But the hard work is never thrown away. Like, you don't just throw it away. Right, Jeremy? You keep it. Yeah. You can work on yeah. it. You can put it, like, in somewhere else. You can do, let's say, a personal project. And then, okay, I remember having that. I can use it. So, this was the thing that I feel we needed to take away individually. But yeah, there is no, I can tell you there's no kumbaya, there's no like everybody's brothers or sisters. There's always going to be different approaches for different people and different characters. At the end of the day, it's about respecting each other and acknowledging and give credit where credit is due because everybody worked their asses off for this project <laughs> and it shows. I mean, it really comes down to like we just had to compromise where like some people would uh, not like something, some people would like something. We would always, you know, be sharing our screens and moving stuff about and comparing does this look better or, or this one or this one. And it's just really compromising and just finding a middle ground for everyone that, you know, everyone's going to be happy or not 100 percent happy, but at least, you know, happy to, to say, yes, this this works, this looks good looks good for, uh, in my personal opinion and and it's very important i think for anyone um to just have that constant communication and just be you know verbal with everything if you're feeling something you're thinking something you know you, you need to say it you need to express it to the team because you are working as a team everyone needs to know you know where you stand with certain things so that it can be addressed and it can be resolved so that everyone can move forward and it doesn't help anyone if if someone sits quietly uh in the corner not happy with what's going on but they're not speaking about it and they're not you know saying what how they're actually feeling yeah i mean at the end of the day you you have to remember that it's not personal right when yeah. something gets removed it's not because you don't like that person it's that's 100 percent true yeah, it's for the, it's is, for the uh, image and percent. making sure that everyone r understands that. Yeah. Mm. I, had, uh, I, had a sign, yeah. I had a sign that, that, that was made that for is, this that level. Is the main point. Yeah. That is the main point of, the, of a group project. That we give the chance to the students to work in a team, to learn how to work in a team. Uh, to show them that they, in the industry, they're going to find, they're going to face some problems and uh, to kind of work around the problems because in the end they were using part it's what really it does does really matter it's, it's that's not the title you're working on but the team one you work what you work with because on top on some point that that project is going to come to an end and then probably you're going to work on something that you don't like it and uh, it's important that actually you work with a team uh, you get along each other that's yep. basically the main point of the of the group project. Nice. Um, no, no, it's great. <laughs> I I can tell it's like we we struck a nerve with you, a, a good nerve where you're like passionate about it. <laughs> you're like, no, 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 guys, listen. There was listen a lot here. of passion. Yeah, <laughs> um, there was a lot of passion on the team. What? So, kind of walking away from this project because I mean, it's done now, right? You guys are. 
uh, struck a nerve is probably not the right way to describe it, but <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, we we tickled you. You you got excited. Uh, the uh, wh what did you guys take away from from this project that you feel like is like the the biggest gain? I I guess personally or just overall. Yeah, I can go. Um, I think definitely for me, I, I always struggle with this. Um, with with every project that I do, but it's like it's like scale of the project doesn't equal like quality or that it's better or more valuable. Like I, I found, like I'm I, I I'm proud of like of what we did and everything, but I think that that we definitely could have maybe gone for something slightly smaller and uh you know spent more time like really refining stuff like i don't know if like, i mean it's just been sitting on this screenshot for a while so maybe people have like picked out some problems with it or whatever but there's like a lot of <laughs> like small material tweaks and stuff that, that i would have liked to to do and and like really refine and and maybe like some more details and stuff like that and like especially for my personal projects moving forward like when it's a portfolio piece like just keep it just keep it small and 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 detailed uh and and yeah cuz like doing these giant projects are just a nightmare but you just open them up and i like we i just always see areas like in the morning i'd load it up i'd see areas that were just like huge uh, unfinished places of the level and you just look at it and you're like I don't even know how I'm going to deal with this. Like it, it, it really did affect the morale sometimes. Like just seeing how much stuff there was left to do and how little time we had to do it. Um, and it was probably just a lot of unneeded stress that that maybe could have been solved by just doing something slightly smaller. And to um, think the project in the beginning, the robot was three times bigger. I know, I know, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, really? Yeah. Like yeah, also, uh, because um, we had mentors. So we had three meetings. We had the pitch meeting, we had the mid uh, prog uh, the progress review, and we had the end meeting. And that was done by our uh, school with people from Rockstar, which we were extremely fortunate to have. Um, in the beginning, I could see their faces saying, are you guys sure about this? Like, are you really <laughs> sure that you have in 12 weeks, you're going to populate a thing that it takes us like half a year? Yeah, you know, we okay, sure. Mid project, yeah. yeah, mid project, we go, okay, no, we're not, you know, this is it where we are right now. These are the decisions that we made, but we're way behind on populating this stuff. We're happy to say that at the end project, we surprised everyone, mostly ourselves, but we surprised and we got some amazing feedback from them as well. So that was the most like fulfilling kind of uh, thing for us. Yeah, I mean, if I could yeah. just do one more, I yeah, I also thought that uh, I I definitely like usually when I start projects, I'm like really eager to just get into Unreal or Maya or whatever, just start making stuff and putting it into a level. But we had two weeks of pre-production uh, before this project, and I definitely found that like really sort of slowing it down like taking the time to gather reference images and and like looking into the, either like the time period or, or or whatever it is that you're doing like the spaces like how they how they are in the real world like didn't like moving forward on any personal projects I'm definitely going to spend more time like really sort of planning it out and 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 knowing what I want to achieve before Absolutely. I start doing it because it's not really wasted time because a lot of the times when you just jump right into a project, um, like you end up doing something, realize it doesn't work, try something else, like uh, delete certain assets, move things around. And these are all things that could have really been uh, sorted out, like in the pre-production phase. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that I think is important that I learned. How about you, uh, Tristan? Uh, I'll get closer with what, what, what Matthew said. It's, it's definitely like from the past, like jumping into a project before you've got, you know, all of your ducks in a row, um, and all the images sorted and, and, and your references and fully visualizing how you're going to approach it is such a big, important factor to, to take into all of these things. Um, 
and and making sure that you're happy with the block out and and with everything that you're moving forwards and also to be like really realistic with yourself on how long is this going to take you i mean everyone's always over ambitious like when you want to go into a, starting a new project and you just you want to do something amazing you don't you want to do something big but realistically you know can you do it in the time that you've been given and it's then having that balance between uh, quality and quantity and of course it's it's definitely you want the quality uh in there um but yeah moving forward it's it's definitely making things i mean i personally i always aim too big in the levels and and it starts off small but then i'm thinking oh i could add this and i could do this and this and before you know it you've got this massive level that you're like okay this is way too big for me to approach by myself and i'm gonna have to really scale it down but i still want to keep all of these things all these ideas and maybe i can compact them together but then that doesn't really work so it's you know that the like matthew said those two weeks before which are definitely definitely um take forward in in future projects is to really knuckle down on exactly what you want to to do like what you want to deliver to your audience and and to yourself within your work and um and and make sure you can achieve it now obviously you know as you're going through uh create you're going through these projects things are going to change you might have a different idea or you know the composition might not be what you originally imagined in your head so everything always tweaks but um to really have like a a, a rock solid foundation of, of where you're going with your work before you actually start is i think very important and yeah i'm gonna definitely think about that with my future projects yeah you, know, you know the other reality is is uh as you get better at what you're doing and you get more skilled and the team around you gets larger, like I can speak from experience of just previous projects, uh, that, uh, that urge to push and make it really big. And like the ambition is there. Ambition is really good. And I think it's part of the creative process, uh, as you start to create, what whatever the game is that the the team is working on but uh man i've seen i've seen projects where you're like okay this is all the features that we want to do and then you they lay it all out and every team does their estimations and how long they think it's going to take and you're literally looking at a project that is going two years over the uh the expected time and you have to the whole team has to figure out how they cut that down to fit that's a nightmare scenario <laughs> And, uh, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen a scenario not like that yet. <laughs> I would, I would say a good, a good like tip for maybe like people that are watching this is, you know, as you're going through your projects and, you know, make note of, of what you produce so far, how long it's taken you. And then you can really kind of like, uh, calculate, okay, if I've done these 10 pieces, for example, and it's taken me this long to do, you know, multiplying how many more pieces I need to do you know, moving forwards and how much time I've got left, you can start to get a bit more time management into deciding like, you know, what can stay and what can go and what, you know, is realistic in whatever time you have left for a project. But it comes with experience though. Like we were pretty much like completely green going into this project. Like uh, I think, uh, and Lely, as uh, he said, like this is the, this kind of the structure for the masters is so we can actually understand what lies ahead, not like to deliver having the experience because we wouldn't need the master if we had the experience, right? Um, this is, I, I'm not too worried about, you know, I, I learned what I learned and I will continue learning and I'm open to it. I never go back and say, oh, damn, I wish I knew that. Well, because there was a reason I didn't know it because now I learned it. And that was, that was, that was the road that I had to take. And I think with all, all of our team is exactly that. Like we're trying to go into an industry that is super competitive, super artistic. And, you know, uh, we also love, like we are the end users as well. We have to look at both ways. We have to look at it as a player and we have to look at it as an artist. And the biggest challenge is that, right? So yeah, we learn lessons and we will go ahead and, you know, put those lessons into use, but we don't, I don't think we need to beat our heads, you know, to the wall saying, God damn it, why, why, why? 
Uh, let's. Um, I just want to make sure I get through all these all these questions. Yeah. Kind of. Matthew, you kind want of hit... yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, no, no. Just to have it on simulate and full screen, just so we can have some movement on. Oh, the sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a terrible, a terrible host. My bad. <laughs> we're just. I mean, we're just having a conversation, man. It's yeah. just like, oh, uh, what? Yeah. yeah, what? What? Yeah, I kind of <laughs> keep forgetting that my. I keep like clicking stuff, and I, I forget that my that my screen is like. I'm, I'm waiting for you to everyone. go and like start checking your yeah. email and like. I'm so yeah. I know. <laughs> Dude, I made sure to close the dodgy tabs before. Twelve weeks of this. Um. So, yeah. okay, so these questions are going to kind of be all over the place just because they they come from different <laughs> different points. So first, like, uh, is there a set texel density in the in the scene? Uh, three by three, 2K. Uh, four so, by four, actually. It's four, so, four by yeah. four. Well, we, started, we started with four by four, and then we went three by three, no? The other, no, way, other way around. Other way around. We started three by three. Wow, okay, 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 my bad. My bad. It's, it's, um, five, it's five, in Meyer, it's like 5.12 per meter, yeah, like meter or something. It's... That's it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm old. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and how did you guys? Uh, how did you guys? I guess create the textures. Is it all substance designer, or it, it, everyone I, was making textures? Right. Uh, that's my yeah. assumption. Yeah. Uh, primarily substance painter. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of unique texturing. Um, there's also quite a few trim sheets. Uh, mostly used repetitively, as you see, uh, on the island bases, uh, on the bollards, you know, on the rails. Uh, these are all trim sheets. Could, uh, could we dig uh, through a, a couple of trim sheets? Like ones that you uh, know you looked at way too many times? I guess uh, that yeah, that uh, Matthew, you, you, can, you can open, yeah, you can open yeah, the, you bollard, the bollard. Uh, you just go through the bollard because it's the metal trim sheets that we use. That I did. Yeah, I mean, m most of the trim sheets are like really simple, just tileable materials right. like put together right there's nothing yeah. like too crazy with them i'd say i mean i oh, saw we're not did, seeing I... the window again but oh, just drag sorry. the tab onto the browser yeah, yeah. or yeah. onto the uh unreal and you'll be fine jesus christ this guy. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you if you drag the tab into the into unreal you'll be able to do it as well yeah but uh, so yeah, yeah i construct i construct out. yeah i constructed this metal trim sheet just to kind of have our box covered for any sort of like small to medium repeated like uh, meshes that they didn't need a lot of storytelling. So the rails, how uh, they use this, the bollards use this, and the rail balconies use this as well. Uh, my set, Tristan set uses an individual uh, uh, texture as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I would say. Um that mo most of it i'd say most of this scene honestly is like tileables rather than trim sheets i guess like there's a few i think there's another trim oh, there's another trim sheet uh on here there's like th there's there's a few that are um like i mean there's this one which has which is just like a there's like some stone and then metal and then these ones were uh these bottom parts were uh baked normals like just on um maya just you know modeled like these little rivets yeah. and these and these pieces here these um, are used for the stairs yeah used for the stairs like i have uh on like on here for example it's like such a tiny deal you like probably miss it but um like here there's this one which is like uh this was put together with oh, yeah, like ornaments and stuff um just like tileable ornaments that you could just apply to the uh, normal decals and just throw them um onto you know like these like dividers between the between the uh the, the stories of the of the buildings and stuff like that um but yeah like definitely i think most of the texturing for the architecture like obviously like a lot of the props and stuff are all just substance painted like packed together like there's just a few different props packed and, and textured right um but for the buildings yeah it's mostly like tileables trim sheets like yeah Dude, the, the whole assets packed together just as a i don't know if you uh, how much you know about that process mm -hmm. how dangerous that can be <laughs> what it do can you be mean? A lot, yeah so, it can be dangerous so imagine yeah. if you pack like uh i don't know 15 assets or let, let's yeah. be more reasonable like five assets into a single sheet and you yeah. need to increase the resolution so that they all look good 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then yeah. you get further down the street and maybe you're only using one of them. So now you're loading a really high res yeah. set of textures well, I th- I think just for one. That's, that's probably one of the optimization things that maybe got lost in uh, like the time crunch would be like that kind of stuff, you know, like really going through and making sure that everything is optimized properly. I yep. suppose the fact that it was just a, like, it's probably not best practice, but like the fact that it was a portfolio piece, I guess we kind of felt like, Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, that you could get away with being a little bit less efficient. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm it, about uh, to ask you to turn wireframe on. Uh, no, yeah. I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> nope. We, we, we had an, a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> There's a gentleman's agreement. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can't, I can't turn wireframe on. It it might it might make everyone think significantly less of the project if I do turn wireframe. No, no. I mean, this is this is an art. Uh... <laughs> okay. Go for there it. There we go. Turn it on. Yeah, let's okay, go. go. I can turn it on. So there you go. So a, a lot of like the walls and stuff were made with <laughs> vertex painting in mind, which is why they have a bunch of extra vertices. But I mean, in terms of okay, this is like incredibly laggy here. But there's yeah. like <laughs> yeah, there's like yeah. yeah. You can see it. Okay, there you go. It's like nine F, nine FPS. Yeah, that's amazing on this thing. Jeremy yeah, just calls us the interviews now. Like I'm in serious. Yeah. yeah. No, you guys are fine. Um, just... you'd be surprised how many games actually look like this. Anyways. Uh... Well, nowadays, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, don't don't worry too much about it. As long as you know, because I, you guys are scared to show it, which means you know. Oh so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's fine. <laughs> It, it was but, just uh, it was just the yeah. time like the scale and the time of the project and everything like certain things just just had to get uh, uh cut Matt, and like optimization was one of those things i remember it was just to be generous uh, like with <laughs> yeah just go for it right just go for the look <laughs> make it look can awesome I, yeah. can i just say that lely is the person that really bugs us every time like let me see for your wireframe oh, i think <laughs> you did it with a couple of times and, and you're thinking dude i'm learning Give me a break. <laughs> but it's 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 like the pavilion building behind. Like that was originally meant to be closer in the scene, but um, again for compositional reasons, it ended up being probably one of the furthest buildings away from the camera. <laughs> so all the detail that I put into that uh, is 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 quite lost, and so obviously it could have been a lot low res. Uh, I mean, as long but... as you are representing it in your portfolio, you know. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone's written that this is like some god tier mobile optimized uh, environment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, pay aware of. I pay anything to anyone that can run this on a mobile phone. I pay, I give half of my liver away. How do you, how do you guys feel about uh, like if you look at your portfolios and and the work that's in your portfolios currently, and then now you've posted something like this? Is there do you feel like you've learned a lot? Definitely, absolutely. I mean. I look at the stuff that um, I made when I was learning 3D um, to when I was working with the architects and to what I'm producing now. And you can just see massive leaps in, in development. And, you know, you, you, we all joined the masters and the lecturers showed us a previous students' work and, and what they have created in, in the time that we, we will be given to do this masters and we're there like, oh no, we can't do this, that's impossible. And yet here we are doing it. So it's um yeah, it's really nice to see. Liz awesome. Liz is watching as well. Hi Liz. <laughs> Previous Masters class. Oh yeah. Yeah, is... yeah, yeah. They did an amazing job in the Batman project, but that's another story. <laughs> uh yeah, but it's exactly what Tristan said, like we saw that presentation and we thought, how the hell are we going from the point that we are right now to that? And oh, dude, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy it's when process. you, because everything starts as a open blender. Here's a cube. Yeah. Situation, you know? Exactly. 100%. But Is there... I, yeah, tell oh, me. Yeah, go. Uh, so... No, no, go no, no, but, uh, but uh, like in terms of like portfolios and our station and uh, Jeremy, I would ask you a big favor, like by the end of the stream, to just showcase and screen everybody's portfolios and uh, our stations. Because yeah, yeah I got know, a giant. I got a giant link from you uh, a couple yeah. of times now, right? Yeah, but just for everybody to to look at everyone's work, you know, it's it's only fair. I can but, take um, over for a little bit. 
Um, okay, fair yeah. enough. To, to, As you to, said. Take the responsibility yeah. away from me. I'm a disaster with this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <the visuals. laughs> yeah, I can understand them. But, uh, uh, but yeah, while, but, uh, while I'm uh, scrolling through these, um, yeah. let's see if I can pull some other questions I've gotten written down here. I'm just kind of grabbing them, grabbing them from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any favorite props? I like my keg. The one, <laughs> like your your keg. Okay. Yeah, I like my keg, my bottle. Yeah, I, like it. I think Jeremy's presenting them. Yeah, so. Oh yeah, yeah right. I oh no, you're. And, I mean, you're fine because once I yeah. like step away from this, there yeah. won't be a stream and, up if you turn yeah, your stream and, off. <laughs> and the yeah, and yeah. the and the flying and the flying wagons, like I I'll, I'm a, I'm a bit proud of seeing this in movement. So yeah, that one. I, I'm a big fan of the pigeons. I want to see how uh, how some of the stuff was put together, like the flying wagons. Uh, you can open. We can open the blueprint if you want, and I can explain to you. Yeah, let me just scroll through a few of these uh, these portfolio pieces. So we're looking at we uh, th this one's Matt's right now. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the, what I'm really liking about your your post, Matt, is there's a lot of breakdown in here and just kind of talking about the process and the thoughts behind what you've done. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, let me see if I can find another, I'm going to just paste. Oh God, I didn't. Okay. Nope. It's fine. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Emily's stuff. Oh yeah. So, yeah, so that's it. Emily Dervey. Yeah. Uh, amazing sculptor, great prop artist. Fantastic person. Just you made a lot of the assets that, that, like, I mean, they're pretty much everywhere throughout the scene, but especially like underneath that bridge area, like, pretty much everything yeah. down there is stuff that she made. Yeah, yeah that's the importance body. of movement is imperative, in my opinion, to environments because it is very easy to just make an environment that's not moving. That's why particles are important. And if there's any way to make anything move, like getting grass or foliage to, to sway mm -hmm. in the wind, like these types of details, this adds. The fidelity I think that you see in finished games, which is why I think it stands. It's, it's like one of the reasons it stands out. That's the piece. That's exactly the piece that we were talking about, the fountain that we could not have in the level, but it's still an amazing piece to show. Yeah, see, and it's great that uh, it doesn't get lost to the project. You know, exactly. These are super cool. Printed materials bring a whole lot of context to a scene, yeah. and they can and make also, it feel much more yeah. real. And it's also Emily went and found original ones, and created some on top of that. So oh, it really? actually fit the story. Yeah, it actually fit the story of the scene as well. Uh, that was stunning. These are crazy. The balloons, really cool. Let's see if we. Uh... Those were added like right at the very end of the project. Those were like the last days, few days. Yeah. Yeah, like oh, the last really? Few days. It was like, yeah, just trying to figure out what stuff was missing. Like the balloons were talked about pretty much since the start. Uh, like, just no one, like everyone was yeah. always doing other stuff. It was like were, right at the very end. We were like, what are we missing here? It's like, were they at least blocked out and kind of in a spot so that you had a sense of them? I did, I did, a, I, I did a kind of block out for them, but don't think that they, they were there from the beginning. They, yeah. yeah. They, they, uh, were, I, they were planned. Like, that was always yeah. the idea, was to put balloons there. Yeah. So I, 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 but... I got to give Joe his credit. He did uh, um, about one of the, the struggles that we had in the project is that half of us can texture realistically and half of us can texture stylized. And Bioshock Infinite, when it came out like 10 years ago, I mean, it was realistic enough for the day, but it's super stylized if you yeah, see it now, stylized, right? Yeah, it's very stylized, yeah. So our, our struggle would be, how do we texture this? And Joe did a, a great uh, research. Uh, he was our tech artist. He did a great research in kind of finding maybe cell shaded is the answer, maybe post-process effect is the answer. And we kind of found a sort of like middle ground mm -hmm. that we won't go super stylized stylized enough so it, it's actually a better transition from the game to unreal engine 426 which we worked on i was gonna what was i gonna say i was gonna say something 
Do you know how many assets, like unique props, there are in here? <clears throat> I couldn't even begin to <laughs> think uh, about how many. <laughs> I mean, I saw there were fourteen thousand actors in your actors. scene. Yeah, uh, I would say I would say like, my last ridiculous. my last count was four digits. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, because there's also a lot of um, there's a lot of decal actors in here as well, which yeah. are like really pumping up the the numbers. There's like decals literally everywhere in this scene on all the buildings, the floors, like everywhere. Can did the foliage along with the VFX. I mean, this is fantastic work from him. I was gonna uh, say foliage. one of my favorite props is 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 the foliage. I mean, it really. Yeah. It brings it life, connects to... everything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think if you deleted that from from the level, it would just look so barren. <laughs> or hides it, huh, Jeremy? Or hide it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, you could put shade. the you could put the uh, the trees, you know, that we'd removed from the that you guys had removed from the center, and yeah. use those on the outside to kind of frame everything up. That's probably where, if I would have wanted to use the trees still, I probably would have put them around yeah, the outside. Yeah, we discussed areas. about that. We were so high. We were talking about like maybe yeah. doing um, uh, a little park that would be its own individual island just floating around. Yeah. But again, time. How, how is the sky done? It looks like it's a combination of like volumetric and maybe like cards. It is. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I can show, uh, well, yeah, whenever you come back, I can show the clouds. I guess. Yeah, let's let's take yeah, a let's take a peek. It's um, yeah, it's basically uh, a mixture of, I think the, if I'm not mistaken, like the sky, like these sort of like high up clouds are all, um, like the UE four. Will you move yet? Yeah, yeah, volumetric. You once like, you start moving the camera around, you can tell. Yeah, and then there's like these clouds here, uh, or these. Uh, hang on. There's like fog planes as well, which are like blocking you from clicking on everything. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> There's like these ones here, somewhere. which are the, they use like parallax occlusion. Uh, yeah. And they're like, yeah, just planes, uh, cloud sheet uh, planes that, that um, was Khan, made. right? Yeah, Khan made. yeah, yeah, yeah they use, they use parallax yeah. occlusion. And it's just taking like cloud textures and then taking them into Photoshop and you know, getting rid of all of the, the sky and the extraneous stuff, just bringing in the clouds. Uh, how, how did you go about matching it to the sky? Because there, there are some differences between that and, like, the volumetric mm -hmm. stuff, but it's quite close. What was the, uh, what was edges. the approach? There's a that? lot of edging. There's a lot of stylization of the clouds with yeah. the edges. So if you see, the, especially the one on the right, you see how, like, edgy it is. Yeah. Yeah, you're because talking about the sharp edges to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when you better clouds, if you really see them, it's like more like pixelated. So it's like scattered. Uh, that was, I think, the key as well, along with the stylization and the uh, the amazing work that uh, Khan did. Awesome. Let me click on... Uh, we got three more... Well, two more portfolios to go through, I guess. I'm just uh, viewing them. Oh, we, we went through mats, actually. I didn't recognize M. Lamb. I'm like, who's uh, Tristan? <laughs> Tristan. Uh, we, were at, uh, Fran, sorry, we were at Fran. We didn't show enough of uh, Fran's uh, portfolio. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just kind of glossed around it and then we where, jumped where into the clouds. Yeah, this, this oh, one. yeah. Yeah, because I got distracted by the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here we go. Right. Yeah, we were Fran. So Fran was responsible for the grocery store over here. Uh, I did for the team also a smart material in Substance Painter for wood mm -hmm. that a few of them uh, used uh, just as a starting point. So it wasn't used everywhere, but it was just a nice piece. Yeah, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. They're asking me what <laughs> Panjo and chat's like, what would be your feedback for the scene in the end? I think I'd already told you, uh, Costas. Yeah. Uh, but I'll I'll say it again after I if I go through these. So this it's mats. crap, and we need to burn it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so it's just a it's just the the balancing of of detail, right? Because there's a lot of detail, and you're doing a really good job with the atmosphere to separate out the elements and kind of tone things back as they get further away. But then there's there's things like um like the light on the side here on the right. 
this is this is black. I don't know what like what that material is, if that's metal. If it's metalness, I don't know, maybe a cube map is not being projected onto it, so it's not matching the if it is metal and the cube map's fine, it's probably the albedo is too dark. But I'm not sure what, what's causing that. Um, and I see it a <laughs> lot when I look at the overall image. There's a there's a lot of dark in the shadows. And maybe it's just the ambient light isn't bright enough or it's the material. I think we we did have trouble definitely with like metals in in Unreal for some reason like some some of the maybe maybe it was like the albedo color or something but when when we had like these metal textures um, a lot of the times they did come up a little bit dark mm. uh, throughout the scene and I think I mean we tried to fix as many of them as possible it's probably a few that are obviously like these these lights and stuff that slip through the cracks but I mean you have to you have to also remember it's like it's like picking out the the nitpicky stuff right like this. Yeah. Fixing something like this will have a knock-on effect of everything just kind of going up a little bit, but the overall end result is very good, and don't let the uh, the feedback uh, tarnish that feeling. Oh yeah, we got to look at the the sky rail thing. Mm -hmm. We've got like, I mean, it's ten, but uh, I promised two hours of streaming on this, so we've got about fourteen minutes to go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can show the Skyro thing, Casey. If you want to talk through the how you made that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, come again. Which one? The Skyro stuff. If you want to talk through the uh, yeah, sure. or whatever. Uh, Dude, there are so many to, props. This is crazy. If you want. I mean, we had such a huge space to fill. We needed like as exactly. many props as possible. Yeah. Once I finish scrolling through this, I'll tap back to the stream. Yeah. And then Costas, I, I went through yours, but I don't think I went through your prop post. Uh, you can if you want. So just just for the sky rails, the yeah. it's a and we can see it later, but it's a combination of two of two blueprints. The first one is the rail system. Oh man. Okay, hang on. I'm just gonna yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll just you know speaking of the background. Okay. No, you're you're good. So, we'll come back to it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So the first one is the combination of a rail system. And um, is this what? Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's not the wagon, right? No, this is the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. rail advanced. Uh, exactly. Different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. what what pretty much happens over here is that there is actually a starting. It's a spline. So there is a starting point and an end point. And in between, uh, I use a specific uh, mesh, which can be whatever I need. And uh, judging by the spline points and by the movement of the spline, it po it auto populates to set it really, really, uh, you know, really simple. If you want to zoom in a little bit for the descriptions, Matthew, Where do you want? because I remember the blueprint, but I don't remember it by by heart. So over the left, I'm gonna go from the start. Yeah, so yeah, so over here we set the correct scale of the individual mesh every time the blueprint is scaled because the splines, especially when you take turns, the scale of the point actually uh, changes. So the turn is either more harsh or like more smooth. So that controls that. If you go a little bit to the, to the right mm -hmm. now, here we set the number of spline points procedurally, which would take the spline. We use a length. And we divide that with uh, a rail section length, pretty much. And then we go and take that. We put the um, uh, the, the mesh component, which can be anything. If you want to click on the spline mesh component and the function, yeah. This one? So, yeah, yeah. So on the right, it's just a very simple static mesh, right? Which I which I created in Maya, and I uh, tested the size of them, the scale of them, and the distance between the rails. And then we pretty much get a location, get a location in the beginning and at the end, measure the distance, clamp the vector size, and the finished result goes to set the start and the end. Uh, I knew that uh, I wouldn't have any sort of like um, uh, loop because I didn't need to, so I didn't, I didn't move into, I didn't promote the blueprint, like I didn't work on the bl blueprint too. Blueprint, sorry, <laughs> further. Um, if you can open now the wagon, please. 
Uh, uh, no, yeah, this is just a this is the construction script. There's no oh, event. This? Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah. There so is. this is the wagon. Uh, open up the construction script because I don't think that there is anything. Yeah, no, exactly. Nothing. So there's event graph. If you can go on the viewport, uh, on the viewport though. So this is a combination of measures uh, with uh, the, uh, the Niagara system uh, for, uh, that CAN did for the sparks. And what happens is that everything is pretty much set from, uh, from here on the viewport, exactly as they need to be paired versus the rail. So it took a little bit of uh, playing around just to make sure that the, that the mesh follows the rail and is constructed exactly as it needs to be in the in the level. So if you go to the event graph, please, uh, Matthew. So we have pretty much two events. We have a custom event, which is uh, the move wagon. And that sets up, that uh, starts with a set play rate and a new time. And actually uh, controls the movement of the wagon, uh, the speed of the wagon with a timeline. Uh, you take pretty much the same idea. You set the location and the rotation, for, uh, and the target is the spline blueprint. So I'm referencing the spline blueprint here. And at the end, we set the location and the rotation of the wagon. So everything that happens on this event is based on where the spline points are. And right, so that'll then, all update uh, accordingly. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So that it is it is pretty simple. It just has a couple of values that you need to test. And you can actually change the speed for individual wagons if needed uh, because they're individual blueprints. And if you go on the level, Matthew, and click mm -hmm. on uh, the wagon uh, print. This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah. So on the right, you would see there's the wagon speed that's set in seconds. <laughs> and that's the speed that it will take. From the for the wagon to cover the whole distance of the spline, so you can have different speeds, and then the wall start offset. It's on percentage on the spline. So the first wagon starts on 0 0.08, the second one starts on 0 0.05, and the third one starts from zero. So you have this continuation without breaking the blueprint. That's and also the blue the rail reference. If you have multiple rails choose with an eyedropper which rail you'd like the wagon to be to follow so you can have let's say your wagons in the editor you can have them stuck behind a building and there can be 20 of them the moment the simulation starts they just auto populate on the rail That's and you cool. can play and you can play it if you want uh matthew oh yeah oh yeah okay fine Yeah, thanks again, yeah, Matthew, thank for uh, d directing this yeah, uh, sorry, <laughs> this like, stream. I'm probably a disaster, but no, yeah. no, it's great. I thought there you go, and they move, and there's like Niagara uh, stuff falling in. <clears throat> yeah, that was super cool. And then the other piece of movement that I created was the propellers that you can go in, which is actually extremely simple. Like I couldn't believe. How simple they were. Yeah, yeah, you can click on them. Um, so this is not even a blueprint. This is just on the right hand side. You see there is like uh, components. There the is movement a thing movement. Here, right? Yeah, so that, cr that uh, creates uh, on the controls. If you go to the interpret to movement first and you open the control points, uh, you only have to set up a loop. So you go like from zero on the Z to five on the Z to minus five on the Z to zero. And then you do that on the duration of five seconds. So that now when it simulates, it just plays that thing. And then the rotating movement is even simpler. You just set up a rotation rate on the Z axis for the degrees. This is very important to have your, uh, uh, what's it called? The medium point. Uh, I forgot the center oh, of the, the mesh. Yeah, like the origin point of the mesh. The origin point needs to be dead center, because otherwise, then uh, the movement is unnatural. You get a, you get a weird yeah, wobble. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a wobble. So it needs to be dead center, and then 
once you play, you just set up the rate of the angle that you want to do in a second, and that just creates a rotation. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple, cheap, but I think it works. Yeah, motion blur is doing magic for you as well. Yeah. Probably also doesn't help. I don't know what the quality is on the screen, but it probably looks like pretty <laughs> smeary. That's super cool. Let's see. Uh, I'm just kind of going through all the questions I had copied over. Matthew, you see you were like, how are we going to cover two hours? <laughs> Dude, it's really easy. It's yeah. well, it, it's easy when we have KC. Just uh, he can just ramble for ten straight minutes all <laughs> uh, the time. <laughs> Was that a problem during the project? Is that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, Were... yes, it was. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> would, would we be able to look at some? It's like one of the questions was like, can you talk a little bit about the workflow of the structural assets and like reusing textures and trims? Was a question mark. Uh, we didn't look too closely at the buildings other than knowing that they're modular, but like, how did you approach, like, how do you make a building that's round like that? Okay. For example, in the back. Is right. That one well, piece well, or is that modular? This one, it is modular kind of, but like, I mean, I can, I, I can open the Maya project, I guess, and see all of the pieces that I made. Um, yeah. I mean, is, is all of the buildings in one Maya project? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Do you want me to open it? I can open it. Sure, yeah. Oh, and the devil has arrived. Yeah. Um, do this. I'm okay, guys, go make a coffee it. until Maya kind of opens. Uh, I know. <laughs> like, I mean, add enough, Blender. add enough add-ons and uh, Blender will do the same. Yeah. Dude, don't even start. Just give me a like, second. seriously. It'll don't don't right. even start with Maya and Blender. It'll be okay. Yeah, but basically the the corner one was just I modeled like a few pieces, put them together in Maya, and then deformed them, and then brought it in as one big piece, which maybe isn't the best way of doing it. But like I, I definitely found that there was a few issues because we were using distance fields, mm -hmm. um, with the project and having such a such a massive mesh. Can you see this? You can see yep. this, right? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. This project is probably like really messy. So like for, um. The uh, like the actual wall pieces, I guess. Like I had, like kind of here. It's not really organized very well, but and you guys, like, I have vertex painting for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> there's maybe too many verts on there, but maybe like it's yeah, it's probably a little bit too much. Uh, but yeah, we 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 were kind of I guess targeting quality more than like an actual shippable game, so. Um, like we just wanted like enough words to, to put on mm -hmm. and like, you know, then I had, uh, like these pieces, obviously, which were just sort of like the, the dividers to go on the end of the walls. Like these go in between, um, in between the wall pieces. Like if I wanted some breakup in between there, like these ones, uh, some extra detail, like this kind of stuff here. Yeah. But for the, for the, for the big one, it's basically, um, like I just had, like I modeled uh, based on like the the reference of this, like this mm -hmm. building in in London. Modeled like the walls, like these these pieces here. Basically, just assembled one or like the whole thing along, uh, combined it and then bent it round the corner. Right. Um, because it was pretty so much the, just a one off. So the approach was was modular, just for yeah production sake. Yeah. But uh, the end result is a like a large mesh. Yeah, basically just a large, yeah, one large mesh, just putting it all together. I, I guess I did have, was, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Cool. No, no, no. Oh, you go. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was just gonna say with the with your guys's poly counts and like relying on vertex painting. I guess the the natural reaction from me is to, to just like, if you were to utilize another UV set and use masks, like I always play around with, um, you would probably be able to get higher fidelity because, like, if you imagine a mask for every pixel would be like four verts, right? So if you're doing a 512 mask per wall piece, you're looking at what would have been a subdivision of 512 uh, edges, I think is how that would calculate out. Yeah, that's, that's why masks are so powerful. There's definitely a lot of optimization stuff that we could have and probably should have done, but... 
Um, it was tough. It's it, I don't know. I, I it is a little tough to balance, mm. like trying to learn all of these things because like we're we're all like not none none of us in the in the group have been doing like especially like from the start of the project, like we'd only be really been doing this stuff for like six to eight months or whatever. Right. Like not, not like our, our experience levels, um, like mostly one, like, you know, super high. So it's a little bit tough to kind of learn like of learning, the best. Like... Yeah. Like learn all of the best ways to do stuff, like actually do it to, to, to get it done in time and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, it's, um, yeah. I mean, when, the I, the reality is, is that that's that's just how it is uh, mm -hmm. in, in production as well you just you go for okay this is the technique we're going to try and use and then mm -hmm. once you're far enough along it's that's considered committed like going back and trying to change it is just going to kill you <laughs> yeah so i mean there's nothing wrong with how you guys have uh oh, tristan's got to bounce soon uh with what we, what, how you guys have put it together. But uh, yeah, it's just another approach. We are at, at two hours as well now. So mm -hmm. we can, we can hop out of here in a minute. Is there, is there any questions that I did not answer? I'm sure there's one or two. Let me just go, let me go back through here again. Uh, we talked about hard lessons. Um, do you guys think you do a smaller scene next time? Yes. Yeah, I think so. How how much smaller? A quarter. Yeah, a lot smaller. Yeah, a quarter. It, uh, we're, oh, hold on, we're talking about a group project or we're talking individuals? Yeah, yeah, like a group project, like eight people again. I mean, wow. Uh, I would say with the knowledge that we have right now, we can probably recreate this thing better. But focus-wise, something smaller maybe. But yeah. I think we stretched, you know, a lot, but we made this result. So again, it's give, like, it's two sides of the same coin. Yeah. I mean, all eight of you uh, have something great for your portfolio now. Uh, and I'm sure Escape is uh, pretty happy. <laughs> yeah. And, jo this. and Joshua, Joshua says smaller and not Bioshock. I agree with that. We yeah. had enough of Bioshock right now. <laughs> Less is more. Oh, always, yeah. always. Uh, okay. I, do you guys have any last words you want to? I have a question for you. Yeah. So you're obviously a lead in a massive studio, right? Mm -hmm. And you look at this piece. And now that you know that this is pretty much eight people that they didn't know pretty much next, they know they knew next to nothing about 3D 16 weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Like when, when we started that, we had three modules of six weeks each. So it was 18 weeks of studies and projects and you know that. And after 18 weeks and 12 weeks or so 20 weeks, pretty much we go from this. How do you look at it? How do you judge it? And how do you go on deciding if it's worth your time? Uh, like you ask these guys, okay, maybe, you know, somebody's interested okay yeah i have joshua that did this or like i have matthew or costa and that would be suitable for the industry how do you go about that i mean i think uh so the scene gets the attention right and then from there uh whoever they're looking at the let's say a said studio is looking at you um once you're in the interview they're gonna want a, a pretty serious breakdown about what your contributions were uh <laughs> just because it's a it's a group project um but i i think the other the other thing to to keep in mind is because it happens so quickly it's like there there was a massive amount of like a boost of learning that happened and uh it's almost like okay let's see what the next thing is that they make as well and especially if it's an independent thing where it's just the next thing you do Let's see how much of that knowledge was retained and seeing where the growth is. But I mean, dude, a group project is, for me, it's always been kind of hard to judge because it's like, it looks really good, but you have to be able to sit down and dissect like what someone did in order to know, like, uh, understand their knowledge. Cause, cause there's soft skills too. Like it's a group project. The soft skills come in where it's like, how do you communicate with each other and like who, 
who was uh, like you were saying you were kind of like the the project coordinator or producer of the of this yeah. Casey, and it's like okay, what? So you you have some some skills in in managing a, a team as well, and maybe that's not uh, high value uh, as a junior or someone just getting in the industry. It's also there's still there's value there. There's something there's something about that type of skill set, right? So there's a lot of stuff that comes in that's not just in the art. So I think a lot of it comes down to the conversations that happen in the interviews. But the this scene, I think, uh, if it's not is probably getting you guys a lot of attention. I, I would imagine. We're fighting on that. Attention. We're hoping on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're fighting a lot on that. And it's, we're uh, promoting a lot of hard work, you know, because you can have the best scene in the world, but if nobody knows it, you just have the best scene in the world. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? If, yeah. if a few sets of eyes doesn't look at it, you're not really up looking for it. It's not like you're going to start like putting like interviews, uh, like, CVs out there and applying and all of a sudden you create, you know, oh yeah, that's the guy. Oh, this is amazing. You have to create, in my opinion, you have to create the buzz. You have to yeah. put in people's minds that, okay, somebody saw that tweet, somebody saw that uh, dynasty stream, you know, or somebody that knows somebody does it. So coming from the previous um, experience and career that I had, that's, that's, that's huge. And we're doing a lot of work for that as well. Hmm. I'm just going to Joshua's thing because I saw. Yeah, I chat. wanted to say that uh, we left out Joshua and we shouldn't. Did we? Did I pass over him? <laughs> this, this is my fault. I'm like amped up, man. Yeah, um, Joshua was responsible for the candy shop. It's candy time. <laughs> but I'm gonna say that you know, thank you for 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 having us on your stream. It uh, it means a lot to um to get our work out there and we really do appreciate it oh dude this is awesome i i've been wanting to uh i mean that's not true what what this is is martin the our community manager on the empire was like dude you should do a post-mortem of your your previous scene and then uh you've got costas meshes as me and he's like hey we want to like is there is there something we could do with it i'm like dude there's these two dots are aligning. I have Perfect to do timing. it. I have to do it. And yeah, so this is this is more of a Martin DeGraff uh, shout out for the this strong idea. I hope to do more of these. They won't be consistent, but it's like I would like to uh, cover more of this type of stuff as well. Yeah. And but yeah, you, you guys should be yeah. super proud of this stuff because all of the content we, is all over. It's like there's so if, much if stuff. We, if we impress Tobias, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm I'm fine. Um I unfortunately have to go now, so yep. I have to say goodbye to everyone. But uh, again, thank you so much for having us on your stream and uh thank you for everyone that's watching. And uh we really appreciate uh, taking the time to look over our project. Uh, but, dude, uh yeah. This is thank this you very is much. great. Yeah. Uh we will get out of here then as well. Um if there's any questions that you feel like were not answered, just poke me and uh, I'll get it to these guys. And yes, this will be, this will go on the YouTube channel. I'll try and chapter it out, even though it was kind of a little bit all over. Um, but uh, yes, and it'll have links to everyone that that's involved in the project, whether they were in the call or not, uh, since everyone couldn't be here. But um, yeah, dude, Thank this you. was super cool. Jeremy, we appreciate it. That's yeah, no problem. Thank you for the opportunity. Not everybody gets it, especially students. Uh, I think all the busting your balls support <laughs> 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 the work. So thank you. And from the team, I speak for everybody saying thanks for this opportunity and personally, you know what this means. So thanks a lot, man. And thanks awesome. everybody for uh, watching it. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your poking. Uh, thanks for making us show the damn tri triangles. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh man. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over here. All right, guys. I'll see Cheers you then. Later. Take care, old. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh man, dude, so cool. Oh my webcam's delayed. Anywho, thanks everyone for hanging out. Uh, that went pretty smooth for like almost no, like uh, preparation. <laughs> 
it all came all at once. I think we, we planned that over the course of like two days. But uh, yes, DM me. If you didn't get a question answered, I'll make sure to get it to him and we can get you the answer. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys on Monday where I will work on something. I haven't thought that far ahead yet. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you guys later. And thanks again, guys. All right, bye.